CataractCoach.com, intranuclear stone formation. The nucleus calcifications form these stones which cannot be phagoed. So our guest surgeon is Dr. Pradeep Mohanta from India. He's a very highly experienced surgeon who's done tens of thousands of cataract surgeries. And he sent this video in because he said this is one of the rare cases in his career. Only a couple cases like this out of 20 or 30 year career of a patient where the white cataract has been sitting in the eye for so long that it forms calcifications. And so those particularly yellowish spots that you see, the yellowish brown areas, that's where the nucleus has really calcified. And as a result, it's gonna be very difficult to remove those pieces. So you may not be able to phaco them. So going inside the eye here, you can see the nucleus has been freed up from the capsular bag. And you can see there's certainly no cortex left. That's all been resorbed. And this nucleus has undergone probably a calcification. And that's the typical formation where you get the nuclear lens proteins becoming so rigid and rock hard. You literally cannot phaco them. And so here comes the phaco probe. Most of the nucleus can be removed. And you'll see, you'll just get down to those two stones. So we'll go in here and try to buzz in, and you just, he just can't break into that piece. You just, the phaco probe won't penetrate it, no matter how much ultrasound energy you put. So that's like a little stone there. So that re, that's brought outside the eye. So again, the more whitish parts of the nucleus can be emulsified, but the parts that are that yellow, dark yellow, or yellowish brown color, those are little stones. That's calcification. Now, I have not seen this in my career in 20 years but I probably don't do as many of these absolutely dense, you know, white cataracts as Dr. Mohanta does. So we'll break this cataract up, watching the video carefully here, and you can see some parts can be phacoed. The fluffier, whitish parts can, but that stone right there cannot be phacoed. So you have no other choice but to manually express it. And that's relatively small, and it can come out of this incision. So you can just enlarge this phaco incision by a little bit. Yeah, that stone there, right there at the incision, that's gonna be removed here. So fixate the eye here with one hand, and then you can use the keratome and just open the incision just a little bit more. And I assure you this patient's not too worried about astigmatism. Um, seeing as how the patient's had a dense cataract for probably a decade, maybe more. And so now that piece of nucleus that's been calcified is gonna sit right there at the incision, and you can float it out with a viscoelastic wave. This is HPMC likely, hydroxypropylmethacylose, and you can push that out. I like this two-handed technique using the chopper in the other hand. And that stone can be removed. That literally is a stone. I guess it's just a calcium that's really become very formed and, and, and concentrated. And it's really impossible to remove otherwise. Now, the rest of this catalytic is pretty good. Maybe one little small stone in there, but that should be able to be sucked down the aspiration port. And the rest of the nucleus looks okay. Now, looking carefully here at that capsular bag... There's a big fibrotic kind of change there on the posterior capsule. So what are our options here? Now, you should try your best to remove that. You can use the IA probe, and you can also try scratch that off and see if you can create a cleavage plane and separate that. So putting in viscoelastic first, I like that idea. And then we're going to use a second instrument, perhaps a chopper or a Sinsky hook, to help really scrape that piece off. Now, here comes the... Simcoe cannula doing cortex removal, and that's going up pretty nicely, but that central plaque, that's gonna need a little bit of extra effort. Now you could do a posterior capsular axis, and then you can just uh, put the lens in the bag after. You could leave it alone, put the eye well in, and then do a YAG laser capsulotomy. I don't think anyone would fault you for that. Even leaving this opacity in there, the patient has a huge improvement in the vision already. But I think you'll see Dr. Mohanta has a special trick here to teach us. And that's putting in more viscoelastic. Get that capsule bag nice and full and nicely supported. Uh, and then now using a hook or second instrument to really find a cleavage plane. Now you have to be careful. Obviously the posterior capsule is only four microns thin. But you can go inside here with this instrument and really try to scrape just the edge of it. And try to be gentle, not poking in. Look, he's not poking with the very tip of the instrument. Rather, he's using the side of it. And just so we can figure out where's the appropriate pl a plane. There it is. There's an edge that's coming up. Now, the nice part here is if you do end up inadvertently breaking the posterior capsule, you can simply do the posterior capsular axis. So I liked that, he, that he's trying this man maneuver first. And then you can see he's really created a nice cleavage plane to separate that 
And now look, you can just peel the whole thing off. I like the circumferential approach as well. The circumferential approach is gonna avoid putting stress on the zonium support. So now it's mostly removed just that one last center piece and that comes up, ah, that's a beautiful outcome. So interesting case here. I'm sure you've probably never seen an intranuclear stone before because I haven't seen it. And I uh, thank Dr. Mohanda for a very interesting case. And now this last piece here, look, forceps can go in, remove this last plaque, peel it off, almost like you're doing a capsular axis, and now you're done. Let's put the lens in, call this a day, and see a very happy patient with newly restored vision. Thanks for watching.